Hey guys, this is Micah from OSC Dino. I'm going to try to do a quick video on how to set up your Hall Tech for data logging. Um, I will admit this is probably the sixth or seventh time I've tried to record this video, so they're getting shorter and shorter each time because I'm cutting content out. Um, so hopefully this works, and I apologize that it's not going to be the full length, but maybe that benefits some of you because the first couple were about uh, 20 minutes long, 25 minutes long. So we'll see how we go with this one. Um, and if there is any interest, I will try to do a more in-depth version, or maybe I can concentrate on different areas of setting up the logging or the data logging itself. So we'll see how we like it. Um, so first of all, there are two different versions or two different types of data log with the Haltech. The Haltech has actually posted uh, their own videos on the, on the matter, so you can watch those as well, but I'll try to go over the same thing in, in this video. The first is called the onboard logging or PC logger. Um, you'll access it by hovering over the data manager tab and you can get to the PC logger here. And setting up is pretty easy. Options, setup. So this is the setup window. You can see mine's grayed out. That's because I have this box checked, use page layout channels. So if I uncheck it, which is probably how yours will be set up uh, if you haven't been in here yet, um, you'll be able to add and remove channels so just by double clicking or click them and hit the arrow button um, that you watch them come over and now you'll be data logging these channels. You can add as many as you want. There's really not any limits to realistically any limits to how much you can data log on the PC logger. Um, so feel free to add a lot. If you, you should add as many as you possibly can. I use the layouts to have all of my parameters and then I also use these parameters for my data logging. So I like to leave this box checked here. This means that all of these parameters that you see here are going to be data logged. Um, and the reason that I like to do that is simply because I have this all channels tab and everything is nice and organized in different windows. I can add channels to these different windows and I can even add more windows. Um, if you just do the setup and have them all in here, you won't be able to organize them, and if you're hunting for a channel, there's really not an easy way to find it, and you can't move them around so that things of like nature are by each other. Um, and if you want to make sure that you're data logging something, you have to literally sift through all of them. Um, or just go to the add, remove, and search, and if it's not there, that means you're logging it. Kind of wastes time, so I like to have it like this, and I can view everything nice and easy. But it's all based on what you want to do and how your mind works. Um, everyone's different. So the second form of logging is onboard logging. Um, it's called user logging on here. So the setup is the same. Hit the setup and then you add all your channels here. This is the uh, trigger enable. You can use it with a switch or you can use this enable. I have mine set up on RPM. You can set it up on any other parameter you want to use. And uh, this stuff's pretty self-explanatory, but once the um, value reaches a greater than whatever you have it set to, it will activate the trigger. This will leave the trigger on for a certain amount of time after it no longer meets this trigger. And then these are some of the, the uh, more basic parameters because, the, again, this is PC logger, meaning you, I'm sorry, this is the uh, onboard logging, meaning you do have a limited amount of space, which is just related to how much space the... Uh, Haltech unit um, has internally and there's different amounts depending on what elite series you have so I use the PC logger when I'm on the dyno and when I'm out on the street and I have the ability to have a laptop in the car with me I'm able to data log everything when I'm on the track I will use the onboard logging for a couple reasons one I'm not actually allowed to have a laptop floating around in the car I don't have a way to strap it down um, so my track is not happy about that. Most tracks aren't. So uh, that's the one benefit. The other is it's definitely a pain once you're strapped into the car to have to reach over and hit the record button. Or if you do hit the record button after strapping in and everything, you do manage to hit it. And then someone oils the track down in front of you, gotta shut your car off, stop the logger. You may forget to turn it back on when it's ready to go make the pass. So the onboard logging is extremely convenient at the track. Um, the, the other option they have, it's not, it's, it's not really data logging, uh, but it is uh, something I guess we should cover. It's called playback mode. So you'll go into the main tab and we'll go up to my base field table here just to give you a better example. 
and I guess I should also mention all of this these tabs here are custom you can set them up however you want um, and I'll show you how to do that in a second so the third sort of data logging thing it's it's again it's not really data logging because you're not really saving it but it is called the playback feature so immediately after you uh, do something that you have logged before you save it you can actually click this playback and it will show up on the bottom once this loads here Come on. Well, I guess we'll just make our own then because this is taking quite taking its good old time and in, in loading. Uh, there, it, it loaded, but there's no data. Okay, so we'll just make our own log real quick. So we'll be connected to the car, and I'm actually going to use the PC logger for this. So we'll start the car up. And I'll start recording by hitting the, the record button. All right, so we're now recording. You can see the little blue dot floating around where the um, car actually is in the fuel map. All right, so there's our log. We'll stop it. Shut the car off. And uh, we'll look at playback mode. So I don't often use this, um, but some people might find it pretty useful. So you can play back the entire log, you can play it back at all these different rates, um, or you can click and drag the cursor through the log. And you'll notice that this uh, blue dot here actually follows where it is in the uh, log. So if you are winding the car up and you wanna see where you're passing through your different fuel map parameters, or your values rather, um, you could do exactly that. And if you hit the T, letter T on your keyboard, it will actually create a blue trace for you to see. So that can be pretty useful, especially if, you know, like I said, you're doing like a wide open throttle hit. To get out of the playback, you hit close playback, and you don't actually need to save anything to be in that playback mode. If you did want to save your log, options, export to, file or data log viewer file is going to throw it right into your um just the the c drive data log viewer will save it to the c drive or wherever you want and it will also open it in the data log viewer um, but i'm getting ahead of myself let me go back here and show you guys how to add parameters to um, a page so if you did want to add a new page Haltech defaults to several different pages here i personally didn't find any of them of much use um, that's just not how I look, like to look at data, so I deleted all of them, and that's why none of this probably looks familiar to you. And I created my own pages that we, we talked about before. So um, you just right-click, create new page, and let's add boost pressure, so right or manifold pressure. So right now we have a dial gauge for throttle, we have a dial gauge for RPM. We'll add manifold pressure. Click the gear, click what style gauge you want to use slide it over to wherever you want, make it whatever size you want, click the wrench and screwdriver, select channel, and here again you have that same window to select channels. You can scroll through them or you can simply type it in to the search bar. We'll type manifold pressure. There we go. Now we have manifold pressure. So obviously the car's off and so that that's just a not not a, not a correct value. So don't worry about that. Um Okay, so we talked about playback, we talked about the two types of logging. Let's look at the actual logger. So this is probably the more useful section of the video, at least I would suspect so. But um, This is the data log fire. So unlike other uh, engine management systems, the logging is actually done in the tuning software. You actually do your saving of the log and, and whatnot in the tuning software, as opposed to opening up the data logging software and recording a log. Um, so that, that, that is a little bit different than the, the ones I use at the shop or have used in the past, but nevertheless, it's how Haltech does it. So we've saved our logs, now we want to open them in the logger. So we'll click the plus manila folder, and we'll go to our data log uh, folder that we've either created or have the program pointing to. These are just all a bunch of logs. I do have some test ones that we'll look at. Um, 
something to keep in mind that either is going to help you or your tuner or both. Uh, keep your folders or put make folders and keep them labeled and organized uh, as best whatever whatever way works for you. I like to keep the date and the track that I was at, um, and then in the folder you'll be able to see um, test hit and pits. I try to be a little descriptive. Um, you know, first hit, and if I do make a uh, a pass that has a good ET, I will put that information in the name of the data log, uh, just so that I can refer back to it um, years later, and I don't have to go dig in where it's just like a random like up here. This stuff, this means nothing to me. Crank. Obviously, I made this log, but this was <laughs> a, a poor, poorly saved data log. Um, so try to keep the name. Don't do what I did. Keep keep the names significant. These ones are just dates. This means nothing. Um, I should have been more descriptive there, but they probably weren't important logs. But if you do make an important log, give it a, a, an important name. So we'll go to the test folder. Um, click test one. Okay, so this is a, a data log that I did in a previous attempt at this video. Um, it was obviously done with a PC logger, you can tell, because there are so many parameters being logged as opposed to the, I think, what was it, 16 or 21 that I have logged with the onboard logger. So now you have your log loaded, and you want to start making sense of the data. I think this is just a simple rev log, so don't uh, expect anything crazy, but it's, it's the same concept. So the first thing I like to do is open RPM. I try to base everything off of the RPM. Um, so the first parameter, you're going to want to double click open it. If you wanted to open a second parameter in a separate window, you would double click it again and see how it opens in this separate window here. I don't often do that, but if that's how, if that works for you, then by all means go ahead. I like to keep everything in the same window. So the first things I open are going to be RPM, wideband. Oh, if you want to open RP, a, a, a parameter in the same window, you click or double click and drag. So I double clicked and dragged that. So the ones I like to open are RPM, wideband, manifold pressure, where's my throttle, throttle position, and then spark. So here's another example of something that I wanted to talk about. A lot of times when you start throwing more parameters in, Haltech will actually make them the same color, which is kind of annoying. I feel like this is something that um, shouldn't happen, but it does. So these two are the, uh, the same color. I mean, if they're not the same color, then I guess they they look the same color to me. So um, that was actually a mistake. That was not what I wanted to do. So which one did I just remove? I removed manifold pressure. So let's go add that back in. All right. So it even adds it as the same color. That's so annoying. To change the color, right click, properties, data color. We'll make this one greenish okay we'll make this one I just did it again son of a gun which one was that let's see this is what you get for trying to make the same video again and again okay we're gonna change this one to let's do like a, a purple or something something that looks different than the other colors Okay, so now it's a little more um, easily viewed. So we can click on any of these. It will rescale the y-axis for that parameter. You can see me clicking through and the y-axis scaling. It will also make that color more bold in the graph to make it visible. I like to keep RPM bold until I know where I am and what I'm looking at. Uh, that just helps me basing things off RPM. Um, you can do it however you like. So if we come down to the bottom, this bottom row will show the entire data log. If I wanted to just view a small section, I would click and drag and highlight, and there we go. Now I have just a small area of the data log that I'm looking at. So that's um, a very useful function, especially when the log is pretty long. You might come back from a hit. You know, you've maybe logged the burnout, and then you have uh, the log five seconds after you know you go through the traps, and you'll Oh, I'm sorry, my phone's ringing here. You'll have, you know, maybe a 20 second long data log, which, you know, isn't super long, but it'll be nice to be able to sift through it and, and grab certain sections that you want. So, um, you can add a second tab to your data logging project by right click, new page, and then you'll be able to actually add a second data log 
and compare them side by side. So let's look at, I don't know, let's pick this one. So this is another PC log where you can see all the parameters. So I'm going to add the same things to this data log uh, tab. So I see what I mean about the long data log, how there's a lot of just, it looks like a bunch of horizontal lines. It's difficult to tell what it actually is. That's because it's actually a pretty long log. And here we go with Haltic again, chain, uh, keeping the colors the same. Hopefully they come out with a firmware update to change that. Okay, so let's add, we did manifold pressure. We'll do some put throttle in there. We'll go down and grab the wide band. And maybe we'll do spark. And what else are we gonna, it doesn't really matter. It's just for an example. Okay, so let's look at uh, maybe this area right here. So what's really cool about data logging is I don't have to re if, if this was me trying to troubleshoot an issue I don't have to keep recreating it um, to try to to try to find out what's going on and I can also sit here and look through each of these parameters at my own pace um, and I can add them and remove them at will so um, if I was having a problem with something I would add one parameter in at a time and see uh, if that parameter changes at the same time that my problem occurs and uh, if it does, that might be one of the issues, um, if it makes, you know, if it's logical. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much going to be the, the, the end of this video. If um, anyone wants, I can certainly make a more detailed video on analyzing the data, um, because there's a lot that goes into that. And I will admit, I'm definitely not going to be the, the most intelligent person to do that. But I'll certainly be willing to share any knowledge that I do have about looking through the data and trying to find out either problems or uh, squeezing out a little bit more a little bit more ET out of a car um, so the, the data logging is just so useful so hopefully this video was helpful to some of you and uh, if so let me know and I'll or maybe have suggestions and I'll try to create some more content um, and yeah thank you very much for watching